The next stage in air preparation we'll learn about is pressure regulation. In many cases, a compressor will cut in and out as it fills an air receiver to the required pressure. This means that the pressure in the system may not be constant, which in itself can cause issues. In the first instance, a regulator smooths this problem and ensures a regular pressure at the point of use. Reducing pressure to the minimum required level will also make the system safer and reduce costs. A regulator also adds additional safety to a system. When using flexible piping, a loose pipe can cause damage and serious injury. A regulator reduces the pressure in the system to the operating minimum, mitigating the risks of loose pipes. Too much pressure in a system is wasted energy. Lower energy systems are inherently safer. An accident at 20 psi is likely to be less dangerous than one at 100 psi. A regulator can also save a lot of money. Just a one bar drop in pressure can reduce running costs by up to 7% across an entire compressed air system and the components that run on it. Also, tools have a pressure rating for optimum efficiency. More pressure doesn't mean more performance and can in fact reduce the lifespan of the tool. A regulator will provide the optimum amount of pressure for individual tools. Regulators are essential on most systems and can quickly pay for themselves. Norgren offer a number of pressure regulators. Remember, these don't regulate flow, but we do offer products that will. Norgren flow regulators. This is a general purpose regulator. As the chamber under the diaphragm is currently at atmospheric pressure, the diaphragm pushes down on the valve pin, which is connected to the valve seat, so the valve seat drops. This allows air from the inlet port P1 in graphic to go downstream and exit through the outlet port. As the air passes through P2, some of it passes up through a breather hole into a compartment below the diaphragm, causing the pressure in this chamber to rise. As the pressure in the chamber grows, it mitigates the effect of the large spring above and allows the smaller spring underneath the valve seat to close the valve. Now, the force on the top of the diaphragm due to the spring is equal to the force on the bottom of the diaphragm due to the air pressure. When a demand is put on downstream, it creates a pressure drop, so the pressure in the chamber below the diaphragm decreases, allowing the valve pin to drop and more air to flow. This process repeats continuously as the diaphragm moves up and down, opening and closing the valve in an attempt to stay in balance and maintain pressure as supply and demand change. This example is of a relieving regulator, which is standard. It allows air through the hole in the diaphragm assembly while adjusting the pressure and relieves when downstream pressure is greater than that at which the regulator is set at. It does not serve as a relief valve, but does allow pressure relief if the pressure is initially set too high and needs to be reduced.